everybody, my name is Spike and I'm welcoming all of you back to the next episode of the F-Zero 25th Anniversary Retrospective Series. We have talked about numerous games so far, but every single game has been on console. Next game I'm going to be talking about is going to be the first handheld F-Zero game that was ever created, and that's F-Zero Maximum Velocity on the Game Boy Advance. F-Zero Maximum Velocity was originally released on the Game Boy Advance in Japan on March 21st, 2001. It was released a few months later that same year on June 12th in North America and June 22nd in Europe. Now, when it comes to F-Zero Maximum Velocity, it was the original handheld game in the series. Up to this point, we didn't see any handheld F-Zero games. Essentially, it was similar to the Super Nintendo game style. It had a similar graphical style to Mode 7, where it wasn't fully 3D, because obviously the Game Boy Advance wasn't really 3D, but it had similar features by trying to be pseudo-3D with a Mode 7-like graphical style. The Grand Prix mode had Pawn, Knight, Bishop, and Queen, and like past F-Zero games, had four different difficulty styles, ranging from the easiest to the hardest. Difficulty styles basically affecting the racers and the track, Grand Prix being harder racetracks. F-Zero Maximum Velocity was the original, was the only F-Zero game to not have the original four racers. So it did not have Captain Falcon, Pico, Dr. Stewart, or Samurai Goro. There was a championship mode, which was essentially an extra mode alongside Grand Prix, and there was the return of the time attack. You know, playing tracks, practicing your time, competing with your times, and seeing if you can get the best times. This was also another game that had multiplayer, but being on the Game Boy Advance, being on the handheld, you had to have multiple Game Boy Advances connected with the cords, multiple people having Game Boy Advances, game cartridges, and the Game Boy Advance link cable in order to play each other. F-Zero Maximum Velocity also didn't have any background music to the races. So, past gameplay styles listening to like Big Blue and listening to Mute City was not really possible in this game. Maybe it was because it was the original first handheld game and they didn't have the room to add music, I don't know why. But no music, no background music was allowed, was included on this game. You basically just heard the various sound effects during the race from, you know, hitting the walls, boost powers, finishing the lap, racers driving by and whatnot. Now, when it came to how well this game sold, it did, apparently looking online, sell pretty well. It sold about 300 and over 330,000 copies in Japan and over 270,000 copies in the U.S. as of 2005, looking at these sales, which means it did sell better in Japan than F-Zero X, because they really love their handhelds there, but it sold less in North America. And I don't know about Europe. I'm not seeing European sales on here. I'm only seeing specifically American sales with the 270,000. I'm not seeing Europe sales, so maybe it sold more when you just compare Europe's sales, I mean, America's sales of X compared to this game. I don't really know. But it, it apparently sold better in worse type of the same time. For its first handheld you know, entry in the series, I'm assuming it sold well enough for Nintendo to actually be profitable and be a success. And as far as I, I hear about this game, a lot of people basically generally like it. They do generally like maximum velocity. Now I'm going to give my own general thoughts on F-Zero maximum velocity for the Game Boy Advance. Now this is my opinion, as far as I can recall, the F-Zero game I've played the least out of the entire series, out of the ones I have played, not clean ones I have not played, really, or were not was not able to play. Uh, I only got this game, I think, five, seven, some odd years ago. I didn't get it when it originally was released in 2001. I got it, like, maybe six, seven, eight years later. <laughs> But I did like it. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm just saying this is the one I played the least, so I've had the least experience with it. Is it a good game? Yes. From what I played of it, yes. But I didn't, haven't played it a whole lot compared to like the original F-Zero, F-Zero X, F-Zero GX, GP Legend, and whatnot. 
I did like it. I just didn't have enough experience to playing it. So I don't have as much experience as, say, other gamers out there that probably play this game to death and beat it a million times over. Overall, it was it's a fun game, but probably one of my lowest in the series. But that's only mainly because I haven't really played a whole lot of it. It did seem like a fun game. It's kind of cool to see an F-Zero game that does not have the likes of, you know, Samurai Goro, Captain Falcon, Pico, and it's all original new characters. And it, a return to the Super Nintendo style was pretty cool, especially with the Game Boy Advance, how they were only really able to do that. And it was kind of back to the basic modes. It was a like Grand Prix, Championship, Time Attack, stuff like that. But, you know, they probably weren't able to fit all that stuff. And this was the first handheld one, so they probably weren't able to really fit a whole lot of that stuff. But that's really about it. And that's my general thoughts. It's a pretty good game. Not one of my favorites, but it's enjoyable, and I would recommend it. That's my thoughts on F-Zero Maximum Velocity. Stay tuned for the next video, which will be about F-Zero GX on the GameCube. Hope you guys like this video. Um, put in the comment section what you guys think. Um, stay tuned for the next episode of F-Zero 25th Anniversary Grand Prix retrospective series and i hope you guys liked it peace please subscribe if you want to have a lovely day